The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. Um, we'll take a, a closer look at a very simple variant of it, which is the keystroke level model of GOMS. And um, that is a, an approach to modeling an interaction that basically simplifies things down from a tree, if you like to think about it as a computer scientist, to um, a simple queue. Um, it simply represents the interaction as a sequence of events that happen, but we don't build the scaffolding above that of, oh, and these interactions are part of this larger task, and this is part of, as, of a larger, you know, even larger super task. We just put the things down in one, in one sequence and go. Um, so <clears throat> what it does is it gives you the execution time for a task by just taking the uh, sum of the times that the various elementary operations will take. And, and these elementary operations, um, which are you know, the, the operators in the GOMS model, um, have been measured. So from looking at a lot of people using computers in a variety of settings, variety of applications and so on, variety of um, hardware variants, these averages have been determined for these operators. And um, here are some examples um, that you can find actually in the um, literature from, uh, from Card, uh, Morin, and Newell. And some of these actions are very obvious. It's like tapping a key, um, which could also be a click on the mouse button, by the way. That is, is all inside that. And that, on average, in a sequence of, ex uh, of tasks, takes 0.2 seconds, 200 milliseconds. Uh, that includes immediate corrections when you just mistype and correct yourself. Similarly, just pointing to something on the screen, anywhere really, starting anywhere and going anywhere else, on average, takes, as the measurements have shown, 1.1 seconds. Now obviously we could do better than that average, right? Because we have, which law? Fitz law, right? Um, to do a much better estimate here. But you know, here the point is that we don't model things too precisely, we take averages. So we can get a good estimate. We can get a, you know, a, a rough rule of thumb for how long something is going to take. Homing is the movement from one input device to the other, for example, keyboard to mouse or back. And that is something that's often ignored in interaction times, but it does take time. And so it's also been measured. And it actually takes 0.4 seconds. And then the, finally, there is this strange mental preparation operator, which is basically a placeholder for the times you will need to verify, either verify what you, are, what you just did is correct, or plan ahead the next step. There's two ways of looking at it. You could say, if, for example, you log into your computer in the morning and you have to type your password, you'll, you know, okay, to password is a bad example because you can't really verify whether you mistyped it, but let's say you have to type your username. So you type your username and you hit enter. And just before you enter, you look at it real quick and make sure that you didn't type it wrong. Or you could say, you know, before the next thing happens as a preparation, you need to, you know, finish the other task and then start thinking about what am I going to do next. This mental preparation operator is sort of modeling the routine verification thinking that you do while you're interacting with your computer. You stop for a second and, you know, make sure that everything's right. Um, yeah, go ahead. So if I uh, type in my username and afterwards I have to type in my password, do I then need um, 1.3 seconds to uh, verify the username and then another 1.3 seconds to prepare for the password? No, no. Just combine these it's, it's, it's one of the two, yeah. There's two sort of varies of looking at it and different people interpret it different ways. Some people like to think about the M's as sort of preparing for the next task. Others say, well, it's sort of mentally closing the old task. It's really a way of, of interpreting, but you only put one in. And we have rules for where these M's will go um, um, in order to get at a good estimate. And finally, if your system is really slow, and let's say you type your username, and it takes you know, three seconds to even let you go to the next field to continue entering data, like your password, then that would be response time, where you wait for the system to respond to input. Um, <clears throat> 
this response time in particular, of course, is something that we already know. We've already seen this with um, Bloch's law, et cetera, the causality breakdowns after about 100 milliseconds. So um, you know, things show that people will probably, after, you know, after 100 milliseconds, causality breaks down. After a quarter of a second, if, if I press a key and it doesn't seem to react again, then I might try again. Um, so the R is something that hopefully in a good model for a good system, you don't really need to use much because hopefully the user doesn't have to wait for the system to do stuff, um, but it may come up. So these things we can use, to be honest, GOMS is not gonna give you the precise measurement down to the millisecond of, of how long something is actually gonna take because you know there are variants in how people perform, et cetera. But what it's good at is saying, I model interface variant A and B, both with the GOMS model, and then I compare, and I can find out which one is probably gonna be slower on average. So for those kinds of things, even if the actual numbers are a little off, the relative comparison is still valid. If something takes many more keystrokes than the other thing, you can determine that it's gonna be significantly slower by you know, roughly that amount percentage-wise. And that's where it comes in useful. So the way that you do a keystroke level modeling of, of an interaction um, is that you first have to think about what do people type? So you'd list or, 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 or click or, or point to, um, in, you, so you list the required gestures. For example, HK would mean move the hand from the mouse to the keyboard and type a letter. That would be a, a little sequence that you could analyze. Then you um, <coughs> compute the mental preparation times that need to be inserted. So you insert um, these M's based on certain rules that the GOMS model, the keystroke level model gives you, and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, note that these are not thinking pauses as in I'm writing my thesis and I need to think about an awesome title, right? That's gonna take much longer. We are talking about routine tasks that people just do as fast as they can. You then add the timings. For example, let's say you have an interaction that is like a, um, a hand, uh, uh, sorry, a homing operation, then a mental preparation or verification moment, uh, then a point and click. So you point to something and click your mouse button. Those are two gestures. Um, that would be the, the addition of those would be H plus M plus P plus K gives you, in addition, you know, by adding up the individual times here of each operator, uh, 3.05 seconds. So you now have an idea how long it roughly takes to move your hand, um, for example, from the keyboard to the mouse, um, verify something, and then point and click. As we go through this, just a couple uh, of, of terminology cleared up. A string in this sense is, is any sequence of characters that you type, for example, on the keyboard. Um, a delimiter is something that marks the beginning or end of a meaningful unit, like a space or a return. Um, the operators that we are looking at for the simple keystroke level model are just the, the keying, the pointing, and homing, uh, and of course the, um, the, the mental operator um, for, for verification. And um, an argument is something that is supplied to a command. For example, let's say you're on a, on a Unix terminal shell and you're typing something like, you know, listing the contents of the directory so-and-so. So you type ls, space, and then comes the argument which directory you want to list. That would be the argument to the command. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.